Welcome to Seek God Deeply. I'm not sure what I'm going to call this episode as of right now, but I want to talk to you about a um, few awakenings I've had. I want to share with you um, our connection to Mother Earth, Father, Son, and the universe um, through some of the findings that I found. I'm going to try to explain to you the best I can the visions and understandings of this concept. It is a concept because it is coming from the human mind. And this whole episode really is about unattaching yourself from the human mind. But unattaching in the spiritual sense does not mean letting go and not having anymore. Because in the spiritual sense, there's always balance. There is always loss in order to have gain. But it's your concept of loss. Uh, I'll talk about that a little later. What I want to talk to you about is the first thing that I read about was a gentleman named W.C. Schumann. And back in 1952, he did some uh, mathematical equations and found out that the vibration frequency of Mother Earth is 8 hertz, 7.83, 8 hertz. And what struck me about this was um, NASA and the article were talking about how the astronauts, when they first were going into space, they would get nauseous and they would get really bad headaches. But the moment they returned back through our atmosphere, all of that would disappear. And it later was found out that the Schumann residence, that's what it was called after, they, uh, after the founder, um, the Schumann resonant of 8 hertz is something that the human body needs and what NASA did was they put these Schumann resonance uh, amplifiers into all spacecraft so now when there's an astronaut out of space he's actually getting pumped the vibrations of Mother Earth. Um, the Schumann resonance uh, in 1953 was confirmed and what they found out that the electromagnetic field that surrounds uh, the planet is the same type of electromagnetic field that surrounds us as human beings. But there is also a pulsation inside Mother Earth. And that ranges from 6 hertz to 11 hertz, somewhere in that range, which is still right around 8 hertz if you average it out. And the first thing that came to my mind is our planet is a living being. Look at us. We have the vibration, the electromagnetic field. Let's look at that as our breathing. Let's look at that as the planet's breathing. Okay? This planet breathes at 8 hertz, 8 cycles. Within that, within us, we have a heartbeat. Within that Schumann resonance, within the planet, there is the pulsation deep within the core. So there's two places that resonance of this planet is happening, just like in the human body. We have the resonance of the electromagnetic field, which emanates from our heart, plus we also have the pulsation of the heart, which changes. It could be fast, it could be slow. Same thing with Mother Earth. Um, and I found out that Obviously, we all know this. Our brain waves are in the same vicinity. They operate within the same vicinity as the pulsation and uh, electromagnetic resonance of 8 hertz. They operate within those same frequencies. And it led me to believe that there is a connection. And before I go any further, um, water, in particular structured water, a gentleman named Moses sent me an email for a video. I'm going to include this video in the link. Thank you, Moses, from Brazil. And what it said was that structured water, we know that Dr. Emoto did a test on water where he sent a droplet of water 
love emotions from the brain wave, uh, from his thoughts to a droplet of water, and then hate to another droplet of water. And when they crystallized, you could see the beautiful sacred geometry shape of the one that was sent with love and the other one that was sent with hate. It looks all distorted and um, it just gives you a little insight on our planet and how Mother Earth really is a living being. The structure of water is much more important than the chemical composition. The structure of water means how its molecules are organized. We can see how water molecules join together into groups. These are called clusters. Scientists came up with the idea that these clusters work as memory cells of a certain sort, in which water records the whole history of its relationship with the world, as if on magnetic tape. People don't think when you turn on the light, the water is changing. When you turn on the electric field from the power lines, the water may change. So that is the direction of research. The water, of course, remains water, but its structure, like a nervous system, reacts to any irritation. Modern instruments have made it possible to record the fact that within each of water's memory cells, there are 440,000 information panels, each of which is responsible for its own type of interaction with the environment. It may be the single most malleable computer, which can, it's like a computer memory. It's the memory of information. We must know how it is arranged. It is like the alphabet. If I give you the alphabet, you don't know a word, you don't know a letter, you don't know a sentence. So the molecular structure is the alphabet of water and you must make a sentence out of water and you can change the sentence. Back to the brain waves. We have our beta brain waves that operate from 13 hertz to 40 hertz and that's considered like the awakened state. Inside of those brain waves we have our happiness and joy but we also have our worries, we also have our frustrations, our stress. They all live within those frequencies of the brain wave. And then we move on to the alpha, and alpha brain waves are from 7 to 13 hertz. Now at that 7 range, as, they, as you move through your alpha state, when you get close to that 7 range, that's tranquility. There is no worry in that area. Going from 7 hertz to the theta range of 7, um, I think theta goes from 4 to 7, when you hit that alpha transition to the theta it is in there that all inspiration comes from in spirit which is inspiration comes from that theta and alpha state um, when you're uh, in the higher ranges of the alpha that's where you're in like your meditative state so meditation to me and I think to a lot of people isn't repeating I believe this is why Yeshua said not to sit and repeat prayer and he didn't give the Lord's Prayer for you to sit and repeat it which is why it was very important to understand why he said don't repeat prayer right before he said a prayer. Um, when you meditate and you say mantras over and over you're still attached to those words and there's only so far that your tranquility can go without release and once you release you move into the theta and the insight comes and from the theta you move down to below 4 hertz and in that range you're into you know the, the renewing and healing of the body happens within those waves. In all of the world's religions, Christianity, Islam and Judaism, it is the practice to recite a prayer before taking food or to consecrate the food during major religious holidays. How often do we stop and think, what for? 
and how did the certainty arise in such dissimilar religions that this is the right thing to do? Why did something that science is only now trying to understand seem obvious to our ancestors? It turns out that the frequency of vibrations in the prayers of any religion uttered in any language is 8 Hertz, which corresponds to the frequency of the oscillations of the Earth's magnetic field. Therefore, a prayer, pronounced with love, creates a harmonic structure in water, which is an ingredient of absolutely all food. We now have some idea about how this happens, through the structurization of water clusters, water molecules. Therefore, we can take some purely practical advice from this, to sit down at the table in a very good mood, and under no circumstances to dine with cruel or aggressive-minded people, because this will have a direct destructive effect on our health. You are what you eat doesn't mean that if I eat a cow, my cells turn into cow cells. It means the vibration and being that that creature was physically becomes a part of you at the vibrational state, but also the the, the soul and the spirit of that being comes into you. There's an old saying that says it's better for a man to eat a lion because the lion moves up in consciousness as it becomes a part of the man's being. But beware of the lion that eats the man, for the man now moves down. And that could, be, that could mean that the man who consciously uses the gift of the mind to do evil things, to do animalistic things, is low in the kind. That's what I get from that saying. Um, I think it's an old Aramaic saying, actually, from uh, Yeshua's time. But when you take into consideration music and how you could have different instruments, but if they harmonize frequency-wise together, something beautiful happens. Well, we have our sun, which is totally a different makeup, not really, but a different makeup than the earth, which is a different makeup from us, but we are playing a symphony together. Number one, the light that comes from the sun makes up everything. All things come from those seven rays. And speaking of seven, um, 777 inside the Bible, it says that there's a mystery about those numbers, 777. I'm going to share something with you in a, in a few minutes. Um, but the sun, the rays that come from the sun, is the whole reason this planet has life. And because this planet has life, we have consciousness, evolved consciousness. The planet herself has a consciousness, and that consciousness is all about her business. Like it says in the Bible, God is all about his business. God's thoughts are not man's thoughts. So we know right off the bat that we can't try to strive to change our minds to become the mind of God. The mind and your thoughts will be led by the spirit once you unattach from the ego claiming the need to make these thoughts. I need to think about how I'm going to make money. I need to think about what I'm going to do. I need to think about this and then I need to make those actions happen. And all of a sudden you're using your physical and mental abilities to try to make you more spiritual. When we know that the physical and mental abilities should be on a spiritual journey used to unattach itself so the spirit can happen. There's nothing that the spirit needs. You can't inspire the spirit within you. To say that would mean that the spirit isn't fully inspired. We know that there, the fullness of the spirit is already there. We have put a veil over it. So we're not trying to find the spirit. We're trying to unattach what we have put over it. But at the same time, understanding that we're not getting rid of the mind. The mind is here for a reason. It was just hijacked by the ego because of society, our culture, and the 
lost knowledge of the old ancient ways, what they knew, which were still baffled at how they were able to make all of these different monuments and pyramids, etc., etc. Um, but let's talk about 777. Um, from the sun and all stars, it gives off electromagnetic waves and there's seven different types of them. Um, there are, you have the radio waves, the microwaves, the infrared waves, the visible waves, which is, that's all we can see out of all those waves. Ultraviolet rays, x-rays, and gamma rays. There's seven of those that come from the sun. And that is the only reason those seven if there were any different, then the makeup of this planet would be different. Um, so my first seven is it took God seven days to, in Genesis to create creation. And I'm going to jump into the first parts of Genesis too. Um, link in the first parts of Genesis to an actual wave, one cycle. Um, but anyway, you have the seven days of creation. You have the seven electromagnetic radiation waves from the sun. Really, I could say this came from the mind of man, but there's seven continents. That's easily labeled from the mind of man. There's seven days of the week. That could easily be labeled by the mind of man, but the way it worked out. There's, now this is back to Mother Earth. There's seven colors of the rainbow. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Right off the bat, that shows us the seven um, vibrations. Within the crystals of this planet, there are seven crystal systems. Um, cubic, tetragonal, orthohombic, monoclinic, triclinic, hexagonal, and trigonal. Um, those of you that are into crystals understand and know that. And know that those are naturally, obviously they're natural because they're coming from those seven rays. On the uh, periodic table of elements, going down, you have seven. There makes, they, that naturally occur on Earth, there's seven of them. You have the first one that has a nucleus with one uh, electron evolving around it. That's one table. Then the next one down, it's one nucleus with two electrons. One nucleus with three electrons, and it continues down. So there's naturally occurring, one nucleus, one electron, all the way up to seven. Those are the naturally occurring elements within the, uh, the table of the periodic table. Um, on the pH scale, the number seven is neutral. Our blood is at 7.4 on the pH scale. Water, pure structured water, clear, pure water is at seven, neutral. Um, we have seawater that's at eight. Uh, milk, urine, and saliva is all around 6.6, .6, close to that seven. So we have pure water. You'll see that in that structured uh, water video. It is in harmony with the sevens. Of course, I talked about it before, the Earth's vibration and pulse is around 7.3, 7.8 to eight hertz. That's human resonance. Um, there's seven classes of vertebrae, and now let's move into the human. I probably forgot some, and I tried to research as much as I can to just get more confirmation, and you'll see seven pops up like crazy. You got more from the mind of man, seven wonders of the world, or whatever. But now with the human, you have seven neck bones, C6, C7, C5, C4, C5. Um, the first, you have 12 ribs, 12 ribs, but the first seven are called true ribs because of where they attach to. Um, there's seven bones in the eye socket. There's seven groups of bones in the foot, seven groups of bones in the leg, bone groups, the seven groups of bone in the arm. The brain waves operate around seven hertz. That's the average for the tranquil state, for the state where you make your connection to Mother Earth. There are seven energy centers, seven chakras, and our 
objective with those seven chakras in meditation is to make them one. Um, there's seven human, there's seven bodies of the human being. You have the physical body, the etheric body, the astral body, which is the emotional body, the lower mental, which is where we operate out of, the upper mental, uh, the buddhic or Christ body, and then the atmic, also known as the monad body. There's seven of those. Um, and of course, beautiful, sweet, sweet music. You have seven notes in the musical scale. And those are vibrationally through this planet. They travel through mechanical waves, which need a medium to travel through. Electromagnetic waves are the only ones that could go through space. Sound has electromagnetic energy flowing through it, but it's called a mechanical wave because it needs a substance to transmit through. So our atmosphere is the conduit in which music um, travels through, the energy waves. It's still light. Sound is still light. I talked about that, I think, in one of my last videos. Seven notes on the music scale, and I think that's all I wrote, and I'm sure I missed a lot more of that. What I want to show you next is the beginning of Genesis. Um, this is the Dury Rhymes Bible. Remember a couple videos back, um, I talked about uh, waveforms. It might have been my last video. And um, the waveforms, everything that we see is really vibration. All life is vibration. Those seven waveforms that come from the sun make up all existence on this planet. Just those seven forms, those seven waveforms in different construct make up the reality, if you want to call it, of this planet. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to do a graphic of this while I'm trying to explain it so you could see what I'm trying to see in my head. Hopefully I'm good enough to do it in the editing suite. So we have, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. Um, right off the bat, I see that as, in the beginning, God created the positive and the negative of a waveform. Those are two opposites, correct? And the earth was void, so there's your zero dB line, and empty. And darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved over the waters. So now, if I do my animation, we know that when we use our imagination, the yin which is the black, the feminine, always descending of the yin-yang symbol. And the yang is the white, always ascending of the yin-yang, which is really called taiji. That symbol is called taiji. <clears throat> well, in all movement, like with our imagination, the feminine comes first. First you imagine what a chair would look like before you physically build it, before the masculine. So... The earth was void and empty. That's our zero dB line. And darkness, the black, yin, nothing bad about darkness. The first movement was the female, the yin. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. So it goes down the first half of the wave. And then what is on the face? The, and the spirit of God moved over the water, being the zero dB line. The spirit of God moved over the water. And as soon as that one cycle is complete, what is the next thing that is said? And God said, be light made, and light was made. That, to me, gives the breakdown of a waveform. That, to me, is saying all life is built on the darkness that was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God that moved over the water, and light was and now you have light um, just stay open and things like this pop up doesn't matter if anyone else sees it like this or not because no one's mind is built like mine just like your minds aren't built like anyone else's therefore the Spirit of God will need to move over your mind differently from someone else so for a religion or organization 
And this is, I believe, one of the reasons why Christianity is the fastest declining. And I want to just remind the leavers, the people that leave Christianity, the people that leave Islam, the people that leave Buddhism, whatever it is, don't leave the teachings of Yeshua. Don't leave the teachings of Buddha. Don't leave the teachings of Krishna. Look into seeing their teachings without the guidance of somebody who's going to try to tell you how to see the Word of God. And they're going to tell you that the Word of God is inside of a book. Anything that comes upon your heart is false. Right off the bat, if anybody says that to you, they do not know God. They do not, well, no one could know God, but they do not have faith that the God that we believe in is the one power. Therefore, there is no good or evil because a one power needs no opposition. Therefore, I cannot pray to a God to fight some evil power. If God is the only power, then I am making a separation and calling God's power BS. If I sit there and pray for him to fight some evil in my life. When we know that anything that ha is a belief in either good or evil is the illusion of the mind. And those are the things that we need to unattach from. Is those BS belief systems. With Christianity being the fastest declining religion, I simply say, listen to the teachings of Yeshua. It's fine if your heart says to leave religion because religion is structured and it will not allow for an open mind. It will not allow you to seek where your heart takes you. And inside their own Bible, the Christian Bible, it says that the true word of God is written on your heart and from your heart it has to go through your mind your ego your persona your filtered system and your spiritual awakening which the spirit doesn't need to be awake it's the mental declining and not a decline is not a bad thing if you're looking at it through the eyes of the spirit in other words let me talk about gain and loss. If someone wants to gain the spirit, then there's something that needs to be lost. When you think of gain and loss, most people think of it in human terms of, oh, I want to gain money, I want to gain health, I want to gain material things. And when they think of loss, oh, loss of a loved one, I lost money, I lost this. When you begin to become spiritually discerned, you'll see, okay, all I want to do is gain the spirit. The only way to gain, I have to tithe, I have to have a loss. What if that loss is just the attachment of the thought and belief in the negative. I lose my attachment to believing in the negative and I gain knowledge and truth. I lose my attachment to needing the physical things of this world and I gain enlightenment. That type of gain, which is harmonious loss and gain, which is like a battery, has a harmonious positive and negative that work together to like a battery, have the outcome of energy. Well, you want your outcome to be a spiritual awakening, which that happens when there's a mental decline. What has always been awake will seem more awake. Now, the mental decline doesn't mean that you're using less of your mental facilities. No, you're surrendering those back to the Father within, to those vibrations, the seven vibrations from Amon Ra that come through you, that radiate out of you. The etheric body takes those seven rays in, and at the same time, that etheric body allows those radiations to come out. And that's how people see auras. It's through that etheric relationship between Mother Earth, Father Son, and the Great Spirit Universe. Um, so let me show you this video from Ishwar Puri. He talks about spirituality, 
not being a religion. I'm just, I want to show you this just to introduce you to him. Um, Ishwa Puriji, I found him on YouTube and his videos just amazed me. They had a lot of, they talk a lot about the mind and you'll get insight on how to be in this world and not of it. How to live, but yet not I that live, the Christ lives my life. And the Christ is that higher um, body of humanity. In other words, when I talked before about those seven bodies uh, of human, you have the etheric, physical, etheric, astral, lower, upper mental, and then you have the Buddhic and Christ body. That Buddhic and Christ body consists of the Christ mind, the mind that was on Christ, the Buddha enlightenment. Um, so check out this video from Ishwar and uh, introduce you with this one. And I'm going to show you another one a little, little later. So check this out. Spirituality has been twisted into religions. Spirituality is one. We are one same spirit. Religions are many. We made them up. Religions are all man-made. Spirituality is the truth inside. We have twisted spirituality and instead of finding the spirit, we are going around changing the rituals to be done outside in this world and we call it religion. Outside rituals and ceremonies are being called religion, where a true spirituality of going within and finding who you are has been left behind. I go to the temples, the churches, the synagogues, the gurdwaras of every religion. And what are they doing? Outside. You can chant as much as you like, you can sing as much as you like, you can get peace of mind and enjoy it as much as you like. You don't go inside. Nobody goes inside like that. So spirituality is not doing something external. It is to go within. And all spiritual traditions say the truth lies within. How are we ignoring it? So when I say, let's meditate, I'm never saying follow rituals. Nor am I saying change any religion. Because all religions are saying the same thing. They are saying the kingdom lies inside, go within. Why aren't we going within? We'd rather go outside to a church. Why can't we go inside? There is no greater church. There is no real church except this human body. And the truth lies inside this church, inside this temple. Okay, that was Ishwar, Ishwar Puri. Um, I mean, this is a fundamental truth. All religions say it's within, go within. And most people do not do that one step. If you went within, first thing you would discover is the mind and the way your mind operates. That is the most important thing. Once you find out what your mind is, the illusion of your mind, the controls of your mind, you automatically find out, I am not my mind, I am so much more. Then you know a fundamental truth of every other neighbor that we have, that there's two parts of them. There's that fundamental truth that you and them are one in, that you share in that spirit. Then there is that mind of that person that most people always argue over, and this person through this mind hates that person or loves that person, all resistance happens from the attachments here. In here are God's thoughts. When you go within, you start to see how your mind operates. You start to realize your connection to everyone else is beyond that persona of our minds. You begin to see the importance of the physical and mental connection of this mind and this body and how those two can open that still small voice, can open that gateway into the spiritual realm. Um, when you use the physical and mental realms, you have to remember that they are one realm. And when you're seeking spirituality, when you're 
going deeper within, you're gonna be using physical, which is chanting, om, om, sounds, and you're gonna be using your mental, chanting, listening, visualization, but those are only meant to connect. <clears throat> In other words, remember the old modem, you would dial up, the telephone was used to make the connection, but the connection was those bleep, 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 those vibrational sounds. And that connected you to the internet back in the day. A lot of you younger viewers are probably saying, what, a dial-up modem? What is that? Um, but we know that not by might, physical, nor by power, mental, but by the Spirit, says the Lord. I think that's, uh, and the Lord is the law. Whenever the Bible talks about the law, like if you take the Aramaic Bible, you'll see that they use the word Elohim. They, you see that they were, use the word Yahweh. And you'll see that they use the word uh, Lord, uh, Maria. Maria is talking about the laws of God that are unchangeable. And the laws of God are always the ones that you see punishing and everything. Of course, mathematics, there's the laws of mathematics. If you get two plus two equals five, the punishment is already written within that law. When God created the heavens and earth, it was Yahweh, it was pure love. Beautiful things happen. And then you have the Elohim. The Elohim are all the many that make up that one. And it's all those many that, when God said, let there be light, those many, were created. Those many are, to me, the sun. They hold the seven rays. This planet, they hold the seven rays. Us, we hold the seven rays. We are within that seven, seven, seven. Um, so it's not by might, nor by power, but we need the physical and mental to pre 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 prepare. So in that preparation, when you go in to seek you'll find the mental and the mental release and unattachment will open up another part of your mental. The lower, lower mental has different variations. Once you get to the higher parts of the lower mental, you're moving your mental body into a readiness to receive the information from the upper mental and Christ and Buddha mind and body. When we release our mind, from feeling it needs to do anything, the mind begins to show you ways of connecting back to the planet because your connection to the Great Spirit has to go through these channels. In other words, you can't connect to the internet unless you turn your Wi-Fi on. The Wi-Fi is not gonna work unless you have a router. The router is not gonna work unless you have the service being come in, uh, piped into the house. And the service is not gonna happen unless you have a company close to you, et cetera, et cetera. So there are things that will be shown to you that the Mother Earth and, um, and movements of your mental and physical body are needed to prepare. But once the spirit begins to come out of you, it has nothing to do with the physical or mental, because not by might nor by power, not by your physical, not by your mental, but by the spirit. And then you begin to do the will of the spirit, because that upper mental is now receiving and hearing that still small voice, and it knows that these works that I am being pulled to do are good works and there are works that I feel I want to do. And when you do those works, you're at a level of spirituality that you don't sit back and say, I did good work. But you say, I am did good work. Because we know by a law from the Bible where Jesus was told by somebody, uh, he was called good. And then he turned around and said, why do you call me good? There is none good but the Father. In other words, any time you see good coming from someone, it is the Father, it is the Spirit, it is God, whatever you want to call it, it is that 
that is being forced through these people. That is the beauty of God. You're able to see through the good works of all individuals, whether they know it or not, you get to see the beauty of this planet and Father all operating through the knowing and the unknowing of the individual. Once you become a knower of the good works that happen through you and the doer of those good works and you are able to say, I of myself can do nothing. If I bear witness to myself, I bear witness to a lie, then we know that these movements are God's movements. These vibrations we know are God's vibrations because even this body that we claim to be ours is a temple of God. And right after it says, don't you know that your body is a temple of God and you do not belong to yourself? You belong to those seven rays. And our sun that gives those seven rays belongs to the Great Spirit. The one that he became the many of. So I'm going to show you a video from Ishwar talking about karma because a lot of people get stuck with unattachment from the mind because of their belief in karma. And the story of Apostle Paul should show every one of us that no matter how bad you are, within this lifetime, it can be switched. It can be turned around. It can be as a murderer, like Paul was, murdering those who followed that spiritual movement, all of a sudden turned and became an advocate for that spiritual movement. So what I get from that is karma can only exist in the mind and your belief in it will keep you attached and bound to it. So your attachments must include attaching, uh, unattaching your belief systems and you're gonna have to go through your belief systems and that's why the most important thing that all religions say is to turn within because no one is gonna lie to you less than yourself. You may get lies from priests, pastors, rabbis, whether they're doing it willingly or unwillingly, it may be a very innocent lie because of their ignorance through their teachings or whatever happened to them. In other words, when you have your awakenings, when you have your belief systems being looked at by your own soul, it's not going to lie to you and it will reveal to you the truth about karma. It will reveal to you the truth about your mind, its function, the ego, the I am of you. That I am that sits behind the awareness and seems to watch your thoughts. And in times of meditation, you're able to step back and look at your thoughts. Who is that looker? Lose karma. It's not real. It's part of the mind. Take a look at this video from Ishwar and um, and then we'll probably end it here so take a look at this video from Ishwar because karma is created by the mind the soul has no karma soul never had karma in a true home there is no karma karma is created when we come into the world of the mind the world of the mind has been created through time and space, through past, present and future. It's a very big illusion. I'll tell you why. When we say we are living in time, what do we mean living in time? This means we have a memory of past. We have a hope for future. And we are living in the present. Now examine this carefully. If we are living in the present, how long is present? Is it five minutes? Is it one minute? Is it zero minute? You will find present has no time. The moment I say now, it's past. Before I said it, it was future. Where is the present? And we all say, live in the now. Well, we are living in the now. Can we live anywhere else? <laughs> Somebody gave me a book saying, live in the now. I said, where else are we living? I can't imagine anybody living anywhere except in the now. We are always in the now and the here. We never go anywhere. There's no there and there is no uh, any other time except now. And now has no time. 
Now, this is the very big, strange kind of experience we are having, that we're living only in a timeless now, yet we feel we are having going through time. How can we feel that there is time when we are always in now, which is timeless? The reason is that the short period just gone, which is actually memory of a few minutes be gone behind, gone behind us, gone just away from us, we call present. We calling the immediate past as our present. That is why it's a mistake to think it is now because just past. Every word we speak is already past. So immediate past is now. Immediate past is present for us. What is past? What is gone already? What has already happened? How do we know there is a past? Only one way. Memory. We can remember it. Supposing we did not have memory, there will be no past. And if there is no past, there will be no present. There will be no now. So the creation of past and the present is because of memory. Now think of future. What is future? Let us imagine that these three words, hope, fear, anticipation, they are really the same thing. They are all anticipation. A good anticipation is called hope. Bad anticipation is called fear. Anticipation neutral. Supposing these three words disappear from our dictionaries in all languages, future disappears along with them. Did you know, except for these three functions in our consciousness, there is no future? If we stop hoping, if we stop fearing, there is no future at all. Now, when we hope for something, it is done in time in the immediate past. If we fear something, those fearful things in our mind are in the immediate past. The truth is that what we think is future is also past. So everything is past. Future is past. Present is past. And actually past is past also. The only way to recover past is through memory. Ishwar. Check out some of his other videos. He has great topics. He, I love the way he talks. His, his whole aura and vibe um, really will touch your heart and help you with the process of the mind. Um, he's very refreshing. If you have a chance to see him live, go see him. Um, with that said, the main purpose of this video was really to allow you to see some of the awakenings that I've had to share with you, which are our connection to this planet through the seven rays of the sun, our connection through the vibrations, both mentally and physically, and that the mental and physical, the might and power are needed to get you to the point where the spirit takes over. And how can I explain that? I can't. It's a, an acknowledgement and realization that needs to be birthed within your heart. If your heart truly wants to seek, it will do these things naturally. It'll feel natural just as in the springtime the leaves naturally come back onto these trees. No matter what happens, every year they will fall off and come back at the appropriate time. At your appropriate time, when your heart is in that right center and your desire is that only you receive whatever the spirit is, not for monetary gain, not for uh, recognition, not for any status gain, but if you do it because your heart is ready, compassion is there, and your being has put you in a point where the desire to know yourself and God are right come together. It's that desire 
that's going to keep you moving forward and that desire will not disappoint you. It will only show you things that will keep you in contemplation until that contemplation becomes a part of you. And what I mean by that is I am finding, and you're probably seeing by a lot of these newer videos, that I'm not really running to the Bible as much because a lot of the verses that really moved me in the Bible, I am unattached from. I attach to them, but at the moment I attached to them, I knew a fundamental principle of planting those seeds. I took those seeds and planted them. No longer do I need to go back and reread those verses, reread those verses, unless a spark or interest comes, which it has over time because I give lectures. But I'm realizing and I'm noticing that a lot of those scriptures are becoming a part of me. I don't need to be reminded. I don't need to read them. And sometimes, even though my pineal gland is being purified and my memory is getting better, I can't remember the verses, but I... It's a different type of memory. I, I could say I am those verses. I know those verses beyond a logical component. In other words, I don't need to read them to, remind it, to be reminded of them. It's a part of who I am now. And this is something that only something that is birthed with inside of you can do to you. So the seeds that you plant plant them and you'll have a lot of religious instructors saying yeah but what if you plant a seed that is evil and this and that number one if anyone says that to you they're believing in two separate powers so there's error right there but number two when you go at this and you truly believe in that one fundamental truth that the great spirit is only one power is only one god then you understand that nothing can lie to you there is no lie, there is no distraction except for that of the mind, which what you do when you go in to seek the kingdom of God, the first thing that is worked out is the things of the mind, which is why most people on spiritual searches and religions just get caught up or comfortable in doing the same thing over and over and over again because they're not willing to continue the process of breaking apart the mind, putting it back into its natural state. This way it's being used for the proper use. Don't get rid of thought. People say meditate and stop your thought or meditate doing this mantra and you'll stop thought because you're thinking of the mantra. How can you stop thought if you're thinking of a mantra? There's a whole process that will be birthed inside of you and as you do that, you'll realize that you don't need to attach to that process anymore because you become that process so those need to be unattached as well um, so basically the, the purpose of this video is to show you some of my awakenings that I've had hopefully allow you to see the seven rays from the Sun and our 777 connection a little differently our connection to the earth as much as you can get outside and just lay on her and let her feel your heart you will feel her heart and our connection mentally to her to structured water how our mental thoughts are very important and your state of mind when you're eating food as well when you're about to put these foods in you if you're in an angered environment look at that video see what's happening to the structure of water and we know that water is in everything there's nothing that consists even rocks have water that could be trapped within them so I want to say thank you I love every one of you I see you Elohim be with you Elohim is you I have a little chipmunk coming up to me over here Let's see if he tries to come a little further. He doesn't see me yet. Oh, he's coming up right behind us. Oh, he saw me now. Elohim be you. Blessings. Elohim is you.